Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. In this unit, I'm going to tell you how you can solve nonlinear optimization problems in Excel with the help of the Excel solver. Well, first off, I still have here the structure of a linear optimization problem. So if I want to solve this, usually I go to the Excel solver. If you want to know how to open the Excel solver, can refer to the corresponding video on how to solve linear optimization problems. And if I'm here, I'm usually, usually using here this simplex LP. Click OK. And he finds the solution because all the relations, in particular everything here in the green part, is linear. Some product is a linear transformation. But what if I make this nonlinear? So what if I add for example, the square root around the sum product. So this no longer is linear. This will lead to the same solution because the square root is a monotonously positive function, but as I said, it's no longer linear. So if I go to solver, click simplex LP and solve, I will get a problem. The linearity conditions required by this LP solver are not satisfied. Can take a look at the linearity report and he would tell me, okay, this part is not linear. So do something about profit and how the variable cells enter into profit. Okay, so either I make this linear or, well, this unit is about nonlinear problems, I try a nonlinear solver. That's actually either the GRG, nonlinear, or the evolutionary algorithm. The GRG nonlinear works fine as long as you have at least continuous functions. So while well, here the square root is still continuous, so we can use the GRG nonlinear. If you were to use, for example, maximum, minimum, some functions like this, which are clearly not continuous, then you might have to use the evolutionary algorithm that's implemented here. But this is a bit more complicated because you first have to tell him in which area to search for the solution. So here we're going to use the GRG nonlinear for at least decently defined nonlinear functions. If then I click OK. See, for solver found a solution. I can actually do the same thing as before. I can get answer reports, sensitivity reports, limits reports. And as we see here, that's actually the same solution as before. However, there's one thing to mention. If you look closely here, see this point, it's not exactly 100. It's like 99.99999 something. This shows us one thing. As compared to the simplex, where he calculates them exactly following the simplex algorithm, here he approximates the solution. So it could be that those are simply rounding values. Or if I have a condition where it says like equal to zero, it could be that the left side is not actually zero, but something like point, 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 and then e to the power of minus, let's say, 15. So that's a very, very, very small number because here we're working approximately. So could be that there are some small errors which he doesn't take care of, which, however, also do not care, uh, do not matter. Because here I made an error, I think, at the 15th decimal. So yeah, that's no big deal. Same thing if here I have something left at the 15th, 16th, 17th decimal. This is just Excel telling me he has to work approximately. Report an approximate solution. Or rather, not work approximately, but work numerically. Okay, and well, that's done already. All I wanted to mention with regard to nonlinear problems. So for decently defined problems, in other words, for problems 
using only functions which are continuous, you can use the GRG nonlinear solver for everything else. So whatever you might come up with, be it continuous, be it not continuous, you can use the evolutionary algorithm. But here you might have to define beforehand the area where he should search. Well, this then concludes the session. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I hope you learned something from it. And if you want to see additional input, either on solving optimization problems in Excel or on using Excel in general, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look in the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.